Right in court, won't he? Yeah. Ah, Steve's gonna be sitting next to him all the way through the trial. At least he won't be on his own. Just wish I could be there with him, so. What was he like today? Nervous. Is it any wonder, considering what he's gonna have to go through? They're showing him around the court tonight. Trying to make it a little less intimidating for him. But I can't help feeling the whole thing's gonna be terrifying for him, no matter what they do. They say they're gonna try and make the whole thing as easy as possible for him, but how can they? So what? Uh, the barristers won't be wearing wigs. Still gonna be intimidating for him. He's still a little boy. How can he stand up in front of all them and defend himself? Whatever happens in that courtroom is gonna affect the rest of his life. Court number three is in. I don't know where Marty's got to. They'll be on the way. God, I hate courts. I keep thinking some blurt in a wig's gonna come up and collar me. You know, for something I didn't do. Can you imagine how Anthony feels? Must be breaking it big style. I'm with you. Thought you ain't coming. As if. See who's here? Who? Imelda's loving mother and her minder. Just ignore them. After what her thugs of sons did to me. Dad? Shouldn't be allowed to breathe the same air. Just leave it, will you? It's not the more scum, is it? If they've said goodbye to their lad, because he won't be leaving here free. Any of them gives you any trouble. I'll show them for you. All right? Should be strung up, the lot of them. Where's the bog in this place? Just there. Hang on, you're not going in there, not yet, anyway. What? Don't go wandering off on your own. Stephen Murray. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Tom Billington, Anthony's defence lawyer. Now, you'll be sitting in with him, yes? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, you'll be called into court in a little while. No, OK, thanks. Mr Murray? Yeah. I need to talk to you. Yeah, whatever. Listen, have you seen our Anthony this morning? Because we're all a bit worried about him. Why, well, you'll be able to see him yourself shortly. But I'm giving evidence, sir. Didn't think it was allowed. There are some things I need to discuss with you and Anthony. If you'd like to follow me. You'll be called when it's time. Thanks. Send him all love, will you? Tell him to be strong, yeah? yeah and brave. Yeah, tell him we're all thinking about him. Hey, what do you want to see them two from? What's that cloth blurt looking at? They're a rough-looking lot. Nin, will you stop staring? I'm not letting them intimidate me. Hey, how come she's never been up in court for coming round ours, terrifying our auntie? Well, the lot of you stop staring at them. The last thing we need out here is some stupid fight. Now, I need to discuss with you what evidence we decide should be admissible. And you need to understand that this is a very important decision that you need to make. Uh, let me try and explain. Certain evidence will only be made admissible if we choose for it to be so. For example, it's not in dispute that Anthony pushed Imelda, so we might decide to run the entire case on the basis of that single push. Was it or could it be murder? It could just as easily have been a combination of um, uh, unfortunate accident and self-defense. But there's the remote possibility that the jury might be tempted to convict of murder, although they might reduce the charge to manslaughter uh, in view of diminished responsibility, particularly in regard of Anthony's age. Now, on the other hand, we could decide to reveal the entire story about Imelda's campaign of bullying and Anthony's terror and vulnerability over a very long period. Now, it might obviously seem a good idea to run with that defence, but once we bring out background details, it all becomes a double-edged sword. Once the jury start getting to hear about Imelda's behaviour in the past, then there's a fair chance they'll also be told about Anthony's behaviour, about his attacks on Imelda with an iron bar, and his attacks on other pupils, and so on and so on. And then the jury's sympathies might start to run the other way. They might end up more prepared to convict of murder than they otherwise would have been. Do you understand what I'm trying to explain to you here?
We have to decide how much to go into the background. And I think it has to be Anthony's decision. I think that because Imelda did all those horrible things to me so many times for so long, I think that the people of the court should know that because if they don't know that then they never know how Imelda was like with me or why I had to fight back against her. Good boy. Well done. Right. I'll inform the judge. And the prosecution. Will the defendant please stand? Anthony David Murray, you are charged that on the 20th of March 2002, you murdered Imelda Mary Clough. Contrary to the common law. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Come on. Anthony, would you answer the question, please? How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty or not guilty? No. Not guilty. If she keeps looking at me like that, I'll clock her one, I promise. Don't you look at me like that. Say nothing. She's not worth it. My daughter's dead because of your murdering little freak. In this case... In this case... Members of the jury, I'm sorry to say that the charge is murder. I'm sorry because it shocks me. And I expect it shocks you as well to see a young man of 13 facing such a charge. Nevertheless, it is my duty to lay the facts before you. If I prove so that you are sure that Anthony Murray murdered Imelda Clough, it is your sad duty to find him guilty. Let me explain to you what murder is. It is when a deliberate and unlawful, unjustifiable act causes death, and the person who did it intended either to kill the victim, or at least to cause him serious injury. So what is a deliberate act? If one man deliberately pushes another over a cliff so that he dies, it is murder. It is murder because it is unjustified and must surely have been intended to cause at least serious harm. Whereas, of course, if someone accidentally bumps into somebody who falls over the cliff, that is still an accident, possibly a very clumsy accident. But you see at once the distinction between accident and design. An unjustifiable act, then. I will not go into all the circumstances which might justify killing, but self-defense is one of them. Reasonable self-defense. Now, there is no dispute about what actually happened here. Anthony and Imelda were um, standing at the pond, and there was an argument. They both fell in the water. After they'd got up, Anthony hit Imelda. That, at least, was no accident. And she lost consciousness. Why do I say to you that that was murder? Because, seeing her lying there, motionless, he just left her. And when questioned about it later, he lied about it. And there is more. My learned friend tells me that he's going to explore the background of incidents between Anthony and Imelda. Well, if he can, so can I. I say murder because, on separate occasions, Anthony said that he'd had enough of Imelda and was going to stop her. I say it is murder because there was an incident when he attacked her with an iron bar. And there is one final and diabolical detail that I must lay before you, members of the jury. Look at your bundle of photographs. 
You see the little pond, lonely and isolated. What, you might ask, was Antony doing there? Why was Imelda there too? He says that she had been bullying him and he was afraid that she would bully him again. In other words, that she would follow him. So where did he go? Did he go back into school and complain? No. Did he go home, which was within easy reach? No. Did he call on any of his relatives, friends who lived equally near? No, he did not. Instead, he made his way to this pond. If you believe, members of the jury, that he lured Imelda to this pond in order to murder her, your verdict will inevitably be guilty. with a girl and now she's dead let me in please <laughs> nikki love what's wrong hit her threw her into the pond and drowned her and after that you went to any lengths necessary to cover up your tread look and that lot's still bullying him now look at him trying to rattle me brother members of the jury have you reached a verdict on which you are all agreed That's Brookie next Saturday at the slightly later time of 4 o'clock. And if you've missed the first four episodes of the new series of Friends, the coming around again.